Let's learn about the bracha we say on wine. This is interesting. What? Don't tell me there's also a blessing on alcoholic beverages. Are you a rabbi? Is the wine and alcohol not considered a vice that I'm sure the Torah urges us to stay away from? Larry, you have so much to learn. On the contrary, in Judaism, alcohol isn't just written off. It's not about the product, it's about how we use it. Wine and alcohol, like most things in life, could be used in the right way and very much in the wrong way. Interesting. It really is. But it's really an entire class of its own, which, you know, you can, we can get to. Okay then, let me ask you another question. When we learned about the bracha of Shahako, you told me that if a fruit gets squeezed or blended, then it has a status change and we say a Shahako blessing over it. Wouldn't wine and grape juice be the same thing? Why are you making a whole other video trying to just explain to me the blessing we say on wine? Isn't it a Shahako? That's a great question. Great point. Barry, thank you. That's actually what I'd like to focus the video on for a moment today. Because the truth is that wine actually has its very own bracha. The bracha of Borei Puri Hagafen, the creator of the fruit of the vine. You see, unlike every other fruit that gets blended or squeezed to the point where it loses its status and becomes a shahakal, through crushing and squeezing of grapes, it becomes wine. It has its own unique bracha. Also interesting. Ever wonder why, if we take a look at Jewish life, we notice that wine actually plays a pivotal role in so many things that we do. Even some of the biggest masters that we reach. We make Kiddush every Shabbos and holiday over a cup of wine. On Purim, there's a mitzvah to drink till intoxicated. On Passover, we have four cups of wine. At one chuppah, we make blessings over a glass of wine. And we even make blessings over a cup of wine when naming an eight-day-old boy at his bris, the moment he becomes a card-carrying member of the tribe. The reason is, is we're going to take a look at a grape. It completely encases everything in it. You cut open that grape, you don't find wine. The wine? completely hidden inside. In order to get to the wine, you've got to work the grape, break it down, release its juices, and wait. Sounds like a process. It is a process, a long one, one that involves tremendous effort, work, and patience. But when all is said and done, that little grape, which sells for $1.99 a pound, can now be transformed into wine that sells for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And that's why wine not only plays such a pivotal role in the hallmarks of Jewish life, but it even has its own bracha. It's because through work and effort, the grape reached the pinnacle of its potential. And our lives reflect that of the grape. Just like the tremendous potential that grapes have hidden inside of them, so too each one of us has enormous and unbelievable amounts of potential inside of us. That through the right amount of work, effort, and patience, we can sprout, grow, and cultivate into something amazing. Why? throughout the momentous occasions in our lives reminds us of this. It reminds us that like a grape, the potential inside of us is infinite. The value and worth that we have is endless. As long as we work to hone, polish, and refine ourselves into the most actualized individual that we could possibly be. It's the message we give over to an eight-day-old at their bris. It's the message we're given as we begin to build a home together under the chuppah. And it's the message we're reminded of every time we make kiddush, the message of Judaism, the message of why we're placed in this world, the message of actualizing our potential. To that, let's make a l'chaim, drinking to life, drinking to live, and as opposed to so many who often drink to forget, let's drink to remember the message of wine and the grape. L'chaim. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, boire puri hagafen. Amen.